Apple just released the complete M3 MacBook Pro lineup and they claim that they're next level, just like last year. Is it true? Or is it just another reason to save money and pick up an M1 or M2 machine? Let's dive in. When Apple held their annual late year keynote, I expected the M3 chip to be announced. I was under the impression that A, MacBook Pro would also be released. Apple kind of switched things around a little bit for what the MacBook Pro would now be. First and foremost, gone is the 13 inch MacBook Pro replaced by the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the base M3 chip. This is now the intro to the Pro line and some may not have realized that the base M3 chip is limited to what IO can be added. The good news is the base model has the HDMI port and the SD card slot. The bad news is it only has two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Oh, forget it. I don't know if this is a deal breaker for some, but at least you can add more ports still. However, Apple didn't stop there. They decided to jump three months early and release the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. While the owners of the M2 Pro and Max MacBook Pros might not be too happy, they also may not have to worry about missing out on anything. I picked up the M3 Pro MacBook Pro to compare it to my current machine, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. When I picked up this machine, I wanted to make sure that the specs matched as close as I could to the machine I'm currently using. And that is my 2021 M1 Pro chip with a 10 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 32 gigs of memory, one terabyte of storage. The M3 I picked up has similar specs with some changes. It's got an 11 core CPU and a 14 core GPU with 36 gigs of memory and one terabyte of SSD. Is that gonna be a big difference? I guess we'll find out. Now, Apple did something odd with these M3 chips that I don't know if is good or bad. Typically when a machine's specs are updated, I always thought it was done in even increments. Hmm, what do I know? This machine has gone from a 10 core CPU to 11 cores, and even more odd, Apple kind of changed around the performance and the efficiency cores. For the M2, there was six performance cores and four efficiency cores. Now with the extra core that they added, for some reason, lowered the performance to five cores and bumped the machine to six efficiency cores. Why? I'm not really sure. Maybe it's to get better battery life or keep the machine from overheating. All I really wanna know is if, and I mean a big if, I were someone looking to upgrade to get a marked improvement in performance, is it enough of a jump from the M1 Pro? I've been using this new MacBook Pro for the last few weeks, and I gotta say, it's what I expected. As far as everyday tasks, it's really no different than what I have now. I loaded it up with lots of Chrome tabs, Photoshop, and other process heavy tasks, and it, it did well. Now, my current setup does just the same. In fact, for daily tasks, my old 2018 MacBook Pro, which still uses an Intel processor, is just fine. At this point, I think the machines have gotten so good when it comes to normal tasks, they're mostly the same. The real changes should be seen when you push these machines for programs that take a lot of processing power. Now, I've had a lot of questions from people asking me about doing things that involve programming, playing games on older machines. How many of you out there do any of this and can give some feedback? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. I've been using this machine for a bunch of editing and I've done it a couple ways. I edit videos for another channel that are fairly long. The raw footage can be three to five hours long. So the file sizes can get pretty big. And since I only have a one terabyte SSD, it fills up pretty quickly. That being said, I have had to edit off an external drive. The experience wasn't any better or worse than my M1 Pro machine. The rendering actually took two minutes longer on the new machine. I can't say for sure if it had anything to do with the external drive or not. Just to be sure, I did edit a video on both machines from the internal drive with the same music, cuts, and add-ons. I made both of them 47 minutes long 
and I rendered them out. What do you think happened? Comment down below. Well, the M3 Pro rendered that 47 minute edited video at 45 minutes and 21 seconds. Not bad at all. The M2 Pro time to render that same 47 minute video, drum roll, 45 minutes and 13 seconds. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, the whole purpose of me upgrading would be to see a marked improvement in this specific task. Even during editing, I really didn't see a difference in my experience. For me, this is something I really paid attention to since I was going to decide if I want to upgrade or not. Now, if I owned a base M1 style machine with lower specs, I would hope to see an improvement. Of course, if I was using something even older and struggled with heavier tasks, then for sure I might consider this. I need to bring up the fact that we all can't afford $2,500 plus for a machine that could save a bunch of money if we got an M1 Pro or even an M2 spec machine and still get the same performance. I feel like the change in the silicone setups with these chips is kind of in a weird place. It might take a cycle or two for this tech to level out and then maybe the upgrades would be more significant. When it comes to this new three nanometer technology, claiming to increase performance so much, the one thing it hasn't improved on is the ability to add more USB-C ports to the hardware. Yes, we did get the card reader and HDMI port for the base chip, but that's just something added to sweeten the pot. Or is it something that wasn't possible on the M1 or M2 base chips? I'll be honest, I am not entirely sure the specifics for all this. I just wanna ask the questions. I will keep looking for that correct info, but in the meantime, go ahead and check out my great Apple gift season videos right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss my next video when I post it. See ya.